I hope we can negotiate. I hope we can negotiate our way uh, back into it, that. But it, actually, John, excuse me. Um, it, it, it's not the you know. It, excuse me, John. And I, th I would just say to him and to everybody else who wants to see the impact of the vaccine, uh, look at the faces of those who've had their first dose and how pleased they are uh, to have had it and to be able to get that step closer to protection from this awful disease. Let's do battle. <laughs> Health Secretary, thank you for your time with us this morning. It's very good to have me on. Thank you very much. Today, anybody over 30 can get your vaccine, so get out there and get your vaccine. Policy, Are you worried about Dominic coming giving evidence today, Mr Hancock? <laughs> It's been absolutely fantastic being here this morning with Matt Hancock. My second visit this week, actually, seeing some of the amazing work that the uh, staff are doing here at the hospital in quite incredible circumstances, really. We've talked a little bit about the uh, space capacity, etc. Yep. Yep. So, well, it's been good, hasn't it, to see the increase in space that there is because of the investment that we've yes. put in and also talk to the staff and some of the patients about mm -hmm. what more is needed. And mm -hmm. I just really hope that you can be that strong voice for Warrington in Parliament, making the case for the hospital and for everything else that's needed in Warrington. Absolutely. It's one of my six-point plans, along with Andy Carter in Warrington South, to carry on going forward for a new hospital for Warrington. So vote Wendy Maisy, Warrington North, on the 12th of December for the Conservatives. I mean, just simple words there, reacting it. You're quite emotional about that. Well, it's just, uh, it's been, you know, it's been such a tough year for so many people and there's William Shakespeare putting it so simply for everybody that, you know, we can get on with our lives. I don't mind it, all of it except the opening bit about casual sex. Okay, fine. I haven't had casual sex with anybody. Okay. I fell in love with somebody. Uh, Marcus Rashford, um, in April uh, there was uh, some criticism of footballers' reluctance to take a pay cut while others were being furloughed. You said that as part of a news conference. You, shed, you said they should do their bit. He yeah. has certainly done his uh, round of applause for him. An embarrassing U-turn for the government by any measure. I think it's just uh, fantastic. I, I absolutely applaud what Marcus Rashford's been doing. And not only you know, he's campaigned on this issue that he uh, clearly feels very, very strongly about, uh, but also he has himself directly been, uh, been volunteering. I think it's absolutely terrific. And I pay tribute to him. Yeah, Secretary of State, that wasn't my question. My point was that I was chatting to your colleague Grant Chaps this time yesterday and he was saying, we're definitely not doing this, we're doing enough, sorry about that, gave me all the other money that you were giving to local government, but he said, this is not going to change. By lunchtime, you have done a vault fast. Uh, right, you go. well, uh, I'll tell you what happened. Um, the um, Prime Minister uh, talked to uh, Daniel Rashford. He uh, considered it and made his decision. I think it's terrific. I'm, I'm in favour of uh, making sure we get as much support as possible uh, to people who obviously, you know, that are in difficult circumstances, especially with coronavirus this summer. So I, I, I welcome the Prime Minister's decision. And I'm just really, I think that Marcus Rashford has has uh, done a done uh, done a great thing in the volunteering that he's done, and I think that he 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 ran a great campaign. Just made it so clear in that video, just how it was so passionate. Did, did you be sat considerably back higher? Did, Sorry, if I'm, uh, on 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 your question about Mr. Hancock, the former health secretary, let me just go back to what I said uh, many many times, and uh, I think I said on the floor of the House of Commons, uh, which was that. Uh, we read about, you, know, you read about, we all read about 
the story concerning Mr. Hancock and uh, and and uh, CCTV and so forth on, I think, the Friday, and we had a new health secretary on the Saturday. People say you you were a contradiction. Yeah. What's your response to that? Well, how do you how do you receive all of that when everyone? This is what everyone says. This is not Steve yeah. Bartlett has said it for the first time. No. So the whole world is saying at you. This yeah. is the central thing. Yeah. And this is ultimately why you resigned. That is my absolute. That is my response. So I resigned because I broke the social distancing guidelines. Yeah. Um, by then, they weren't actually rules. They weren't the law. But that's not the point. The point is they were the guidelines that I'd been proposing. And, you know, that happened because I fell in love with somebody. And, you know, I'd, I've known Gina for more than half of my life and we first actually worked together on student radio um, back in the Oxford days and um, I brought her into the department to help with public communications in the same way we brought loads of brilliant people in who were experts in their field um, and so we spent a lot of time together ironically trying to you know get me to be able to communicate in a more emotionally intelligent way and and uh, and we fell in love and you know that's something that that was completely outside of my control um and i of course i i regret the you know the the pain that that's caused and the very 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 public nature you know anybody who's been through this knows how difficult it is how painful it is doing that in public is incredibly painful and um uh, but uh, but you know I, I fell in love with someone mr speaker the reform of social care has been ducked for decades because successive governments successive governments have put it in the too difficult box so can i congratulate the prime minister for delivering on our commitments and his commitment and can I ask him to ensure that as well as the money we integrate properly the NHS with social care so that people can get the dignity that they deserve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, th thank you very much. Um, uh, I want to thank my, my right honourable friend because he uh, played a major part uh, in, the gesta in, in the gestation of these uh, these policies, and, and he knows he knows them intimately. He knows them well, and uh, he is completely right. And he's been uh, massively encouraging uh, to the government over the course of, of the last few uh, few weeks. So, uh, what we will be doing is bringing forward a, a white paper on on the integration, and uh, of course, this is going to be difficult, but it's got to be done.